Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. It is a beautiful day here in the bonsai zone, but my tropical paradise in the glass greenhouse is coming to an end. We've got some really cold weather coming in the forecast over the next two weeks. I knew my days of this tropical paradise were coming to an end. Last year, I kept my trees out in the old greenhouse, the plastic one, till the first week in December, and that was only because I was working on the plant room trying to get it finished in time for winter. And I did get it finished, luckily. So the trees were in the old greenhouse and they, I had an insulated tarp over top trying to keep the warmth in, and it just barely did. There were a few that didn't do so well in the cool weather, but most of them survived quite nicely. So this year, they'll be coming in a little earlier, but I think I've really stretched the growing season, kind of mid-November. That's pretty good for up here in Canada. Today, I'll be working on my yellow hibiscus. I had recently pruned it back hard just under a year ago, and I'll show you the results today. Here's a look at my yellow hibiscus today. It's got a lot of flower buds on, but I'm going to prune those off because I'd rather the energy of the tree go into growth of branches rather than flowering at this time of the year. This was the front I chose for the tree when I pruned it last, and it may change today depending on what new branches grew in and what ones didn't. So I'll rotate the tree around so you can see a bit of the structure. and back to the front. Some of the hard pruning worked really well and other places it didn't. You can see this branch up the top here. I cut it off, hard pruning it, and nothing grew on that branch. It just died off. There's another stub here. I pruned off, nothing back budded on there. Most of the other places were successful, but yeah, there's a few areas and that happens with hard pruning. Hard pruning is kind of like uh, throwing the dice and then you see what you get because sometimes branches die off, sometimes you get good results, sometimes you don't. And you, you hard prune them and whatever grows in, then you work with what you get. So whatever's growing in on this tree, those will be my branches I work with. And the ones that died off, you prune them away and you work with what you've got. I'm going to start the work today by pruning off all the dead wood, so all these stubs that nothing grew out of, making a nice flush cut. All right, here I go. I'm going to start by just cutting the deadwood off as flush as I can get it, and then I'll clean it up. So here I go, like that, and one here, like that. The big tall one up the top here, that's oh, gotta come off. Oh, if I can get in there, I don't wanna injure the other branches. Oh, that's coming there. There we go. All right, now I'll come in and clean it up with the spherical cutters. So I get a nice flush pruning scar. That should do. Now there's one up here I can get rid of. And there's a big thick one up top here. And then I can come in and clean it up. That looks good. Now there's a few other stubs. Um, you can see one here that I've got to clean up. Another one down below here. Just to make the branches a little smoother. Now, have I got them all? Probably not, I'll have a look around. Here's, there's a stub here at the end of the branch I can take off, like that. And I think that's got them all. Okay, so now it's time to look at what's left. Everything now on the yellow hibiscus is living tissue, living branches. So my next step, I'm going to defoliate it. I'm finding it hard to see in the branch structure and kind of see what's going on. So I'm going to defoliate it. And then when I bring it into the plant room for the winter, it'll, it'll uh, leaf out again uh, fairly quickly because it's quite vigorous. 
It takes a lot of energy from the plant to generate these flowers. So instead of putting all the energy into the flowers, I'm going to prune them off and all that excess energy will go into creating new leaves and new branches. So I'll begin the defoliation. I'm going to cut the ends off these branches because I won't be using these long ends. And then I'll start just taking the leaves off. Take that tip off too. Now this tree doesn't have a lot of leaves, but they are large. And it's kind of hard to see what's going on with all these large leaves in the way. So I think this will make the styling a lot easier to make you know, good decisions for the future of this tree. I really like hibiscus as a species for bonsai. I think they're really cool. They have nice bark texture. The leaves reduce nicely and they get these beautiful flowers. So I'm looking forward to developing this tree into the future, making a nice bonsai out of it. Okay, I think that's good. I can leave these little tiny leaves on still. I can see quite easily with them still on the tree and It's always nice to have a few leaves on to see how your tree's doing. If they stay green, you know the tree's doing all right. If they start shriveling up or something, you know there's a problem. Okay. All right, I'm going to stand back and have a look at the overall structure of the tree. All right, I'm having a look at the tree. So the central leader kind of comes up, kind of comes forward here, which is usually what you want in a bonsai is the apex to kind of slightly come forward. So I think I've got a good bud here. I could take this whole top off the tree and grow this as the new leader. That would give me some taper in the trunk because it's quite, you know, even this thickness in this one. Or even maybe up here, there's a back bud coming out here, maybe there. Let's do that for now because it, it's too straight and cylindrical this part, so. Like that. That'll give me a branch kind of coming this way and that way. Um, I've got, down here I've got a duplicate branch. So this is the original branch, which is still healthy. And then a new shoot came from the base of that branch and kind of crosses it, shoots skyward. So I don't need that. So I'll be taking that right off. Like that. Keeping my better branch the original branch there like that so this branch it divides from one to two here I'm just taking a stub off there and then I've got a more vertical kind of one coming up which kind of continues the straight line of the branch so I think I want to change the direction here and divide from one to two so I'll take this one off like that and then I'll prune this one back to a outward facing leaf so my new branch comes in more horizontal and that's got that lowest branch pruned up now this branch has a similar case I've got my original thick branch here and then I have a new shoot a younger one coming here so I've got to decide you know which one do I want to keep This is quite thick. That's why I'm thinking maybe the thinner one, but I don't know. This one's also very thick here. I've got a lot of branches that are quite horizontal. The trunk comes up and then 90 degrees off of it come these branches like this one, this one. I would rather them sweeping upwards like these ones. So I think, I think I'm going to have to keep the upright ones and remove some of the horizontal ones like this one it's just too horizontal okay I'm going to take that one off it's just too horizontal for this 
place on the tree. So here I go. I'll just rough cut it and then clean it up like that. Now this branch is very long, this one. It's thick, comes up, and then it divides and there's a lot of buds in this area. So I think I'll just take it back to here. Uh, actually, yeah, I, I think right back to this bud and the top one, so to here. So here I go, like that. There's another branch coming from the base of that, you know, this will be a trunk eventually. I think it's too thin and I'll keep my thicker one because that one's coming straight out the front if this is the front of the tree, which I think it will be. Now, these two branches are kind of opposite each other. It kind of creates a Y here or a, a trident or a fork. Tough decisions here. Um, If I have this as the front of the tree, because the apex kind of leans over here, I could remove this entire thick one and just keep this one. But then I'd have nothing out this direction, which... <sighs> it's not a bad front there, but I'd have to remove this branch. And I have a quite a scar in the front of the tree. Yeah, I'm even considering removing the top here. This is a nice trunk line coming up here. I'm going to get rid of this one. I'm going to keep the other branch. So here I go. Before I change my mind. <laughs> Off it comes. There. So I'll clean that up. That's pretty good there. Okay, so let me have a look at it now. That's not bad there. I still got that kind of branches coming close to the same point, but this one's a little lower. Yeah, I'm going to prune this one off. I've got a butt out here, but that makes this branch quite long. Just hoping to shorten it. Maybe I will, I'll go back to here. See what happens. Maybe something will come out on this side. This one I'll have to go back to here. Like that. I got a dead piece in here I can take out. Now, this branch. I like this one because it sweeps upwards, but this one doesn't really sweep upward that well. I could make this the continuation of it and prune off the lower part. I'm going to take this one off here. This one's... Very stiff, this branch. It has to come off here. Like that. That'll be the continuation of it. Uh, this one's got to come off. And I'm... This one... Oh, dear. I think... I'm going to have to remove this this one or you know this one now uh, let me see here I definitely have to get rid of this one it, it kind of swoops downward and I've got this one I want to develop so this one's got to come off like that and then I don't really like this one because it's on the kind of the inside of this curve here I'm gonna take it right off. I, I don't like I don't like anything about these branches here. I think you know my trunk line's gotta go higher. So off they come. Like that. Do some cleanup. Okay, now let's have a look at it. So maybe this view. 
maybe. Yeah, I think somewhere around there would be the front. Let me pick the front. I'll put my wire in here. I think right here. There's the front. Now, that could change in future as more branches maybe develop off the main trunk. I may even remove these lower branches in future and develop the canopy more up here. It all depends what grows in. So, it'll be a bit of a waiting game, I guess. I'm not left with too much on the tree, but I think, you know, getting this basic structure is so important on the tree. Kind of establishing a pleasing kind of basic structure to the tree and then once you start developing branches in that, the rest comes quite quickly in the bonsai. But this is sometimes the hardest part is getting that core structure of the tree set in stone. I'm going to do some weeding. I've got a lot of this um, wood sorrel. That's what it's called. Wood sorrel. And it spreads like crazy and it has really deep roots. I don't know if I can pull one out to show you the roots, but... Yeah, even a little one has a long root on them. So, you, yeah, I got to get them out. They're horrible. They spread. Yeah, there's the roots on that one. That was pretty deep. They get these seed pods that, when you touch them, they explode and they shower hundreds of seeds all over the surface of the soil. And they just, you know, keep multiplying. All the rabbits and ducks here can watch this tree grow over the winter. I was hoping to keep more of the tree's structure, but I ended up pruning off a lot. But I'm sure someday I'll be glad I did because, you know, I'll get a nice basic skeleton to the tree, which is very important. You know, the trunk is one of the most important parts of a bonsai is to get a nice pleasing trunk line. All right, I think I've got all the weeds out now. Let's take our bunnies off. And our frog and our ducks and rake out the surface soil a bit. So I'm just dropping the soil level a bit just below the lip of the pot. I think to about there. So you can see that flare at the base of the tree now. That's kind of exciting seeing that. I've reduced my yellow hibiscus right back to the basics, basically a stick in a pot, but it's got a nice root base developing. The trunk has some nice structure to it. I think it's something I can build on in the future. So I think it'll be a good looking tree someday. I'll show you my other hibiscus that I've been working on for quite a long time. Here's a look at my red hibiscus. This tree started out as regular nursery stock that my mom bought and she got tired of bringing it in every winter from the front porch into the house for the winter and back out in spring because it was in a great big giant pot and it was quite tall. So she gave it to me to turn into a bonsai. So I, I reduced it back and I've grown this canopy over many, many years. And it, it's starting to look quite nice, I think. It's got a crown of flowers on it at the moment. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven flower buds. So they'll be starting to come out uh, probably when I bring it indoors. I'll rotate the tree around so you can see it from all angles. So this is the front coming around to the right hand side. Coming around to the back. There's a yellow leaf there. Coming around to the left hand side. And coming around back to the front. You can see how the leaves have reduced on this tree. The regular hibiscus leaves are huge and they're about half that size now. Here's a look at the flower buds on the top of the hibiscus so they're all developing nicely. Now usually on a hibiscus you don't get them all coming out at the same time. I think I've had four out at the same time on this tree and that's the most I've ever had. 
I've gotten many loads of wood chips in the truck this year and I put them all around the base of the greenhouse. You can see it's all kind of level with the foundation now. I put them all through my bonsai area. So it makes a nice area to walk on. You can see down here, it's all wood chipped. All over here, it's all wood chipped. So it's nice, it makes good pathways and the weeds don't grow up as easily. I got a new load of wood chips this morning. So you can see them in the truck here. Really nice kind of hardwood wood chips. Really good quality ones. Sometimes you luck out. Other days it's kind of softwood, which doesn't last as long. But I think these are maples. That load of wood chips might be one of the last trips of the truck for this year. It'll be coming off the road for the winter very soon. I don't want to drive it in winter because they salt the roads and it just, it'll rust the truck out. So I try and keep it as nice as possible. I've got the snow tires on the Micra, so it's all ready for winter. The Matrix will be coming off the road for the winter too, so not many days left of driving that. Here's a look at the larch forest today. The yellows are really coming on in the trees now. Some of them still have a hint of green, but it's, it's disappearing fast. I think in the next couple of days, everything will be yellow. It looks really nice at the moment, getting all that variation in color. I really like it. it looks awesome. managed to get my greenhouse finished this year and Laura got her greenhouse finished for the ducks. Let's go have a look at it. Hi Laura. <laughs> so here's Laura's greenhouse she built. So she's got screen on all the windows because apparently the ducks will fly up and they've broken some windows in the past. So she's learned you got to put this hardware cloth across the inside of the windows so they don't get broken. She's still working on putting the plastic. You can see there's hardware cloth on all the skylights to stop that breaking if something falls, a tree branch or something. And she's battening down the, the plastic on top to keep it all waterproof for the winter. And that'll help the snow sliding off. So let's go inside and have a look. The door isn't finished yet, but uh, everything works now. Here's a look at the sunroom from the inside. You can see it's nice and bright, warm, I think Laura will really enjoy coming in, in here in the winter to feed them and give them water. So the front door, that goes to the outside. And then this door, this goes to the outside pen. So you can open this up. There's their cedar tree, the big tall cedar that they can sleep under. So everything has to be screened in in this area because the raccoons will come in and kill the chickens. So it's screen up on the top and all the walls are all caged in. On the floor, there's a big thick layer of wood chips that can be changed as it gets dirty and fresh stuff can be put down. Usually we use those softwood, uh, softwood chips. This entire building is made from recycled wood, from skids and the leftover lumber from the old plant room roof. Good jump, my friend. You gonna eat that nut up there? Hi, hello. Quite a severe pruning on my yellow hibiscus today, but it's a step closer to becoming eventually a nice bonsai. And that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>